You're listening to Park Run Magazine, now produced in a way you can listen to. Each episode of the audio magazine is full of features about getting started on a more active lifestyle, tips and ideas about becoming healthier and happier, plus, of course, stories about the communities around Park Run events. Hello, this is episode three of series one of the audio version of Park Run magazine, featuring a selection of the stories from the first issue of the printed magazine. Coming up in this episode, we take a deep dive into Park Run's own activewear brand, Contra. Contra is an inclusive range of clothes to wear when you're getting active, and the t-shirts and bottoms don't conform to prescriptive sizing. This inclusivity is really important to Parkrun's founder, Paul Sinton Hewitt. He explains more in the story. And if you're a fan of Parkrun statistics, we'll find out how the data generated at every event goes towards making Parkrun better for everyone. Let's kick off with the story behind Contra. Paul Sinton Hewitt is a familiar name in Parkrun circles, but do you know Paul's story? Paul Sinton Hewitt was born in Zimbabwe in 1960 and grew up in South Africa, where, aged only five, he found himself in a children's home. It was a tough environment where Paul suffered bullying at the hands of the other residents. After coming to the UK in the early 1990s, Paul suffered a mental breakdown. It was partly thanks to running that he was able to recover from that period. By 2004, Paul found himself both nursing an injury that stopped him running and suddenly unemployed. But from this adversity, Paul decided to organise free 5K time trials in Bushy Park, southwest London. From a modest start, Park Run has grown into a global movement, and Paul has been recognised for his immense contributions to sport, with a CBE for services to grassroots sports participation in 2014, selection as an Ashoka Fellow, an award for changemakers tackling social issues sustainably in 2016, and the Albert Medal from the Royal Society of Arts for building a global participation movement in 2019. Walking, jogging, running and volunteering do not require loads of equipment. Arguably, all you need are good shoes and the right clothing for the conditions. But finding suitable things to wear can be problematic. A challenge Parkrun founder Paul Sinton Hewitt set out to solve when he launched clothing brand Contra. Let's find out more about how Contra came about. When Paul Sinton Hewitt kicked off the parkrun journey with the Bushy Park Time Trial in 2004, sports kit wasn't as widely available as it is now. Specialist retailers sold running shoes, socks and technical garments, and runners were assumed to be a certain shape and size. And that situation proved frustratingly slow to change. As parkrun's popularity grew, Paul found himself visiting events and talking to park runners across the world. A theme began to emerge. Over the course of hundreds of conversations with park run participants, Paul realized that the conventional view of what being physically active looked like didn't include everyone. Park runners were telling him that they felt underrepresented, ignored, and unwelcome in the world of mainstream sports retail. Finding something comfortable to wear when exercising was too often an unpleasant experience or simply impossible for so many. Kit typically wasn't available in a wide enough range of sizes and specialist stores could be intimidating. Stereotypical images of what people exercising should look like contradicted Paul's vision of creating an accessible, inclusive event for everyone. People who wanted to improve their health weren't being catered for by established sportswear manufacturers and retailers. A lack of suitable clothing was a barrier to enjoying physical activity. The athletic apparel industry was getting itself an unenviable reputation for using factories with poor working conditions. So in 2018, Paul and his colleagues at Parkrun launched Contra. And it was clear from the start that Paul would not be creating a run-of-the-mill sportswear brand. From its inception, Contra would take a different approach to sports kit. As Paul explains, Once I decided that we would create a clothing brand, there were a few aspects of the business that I was determined not to compromise. Paul's strong values around fairness, equality and inclusivity lie at the heart of Contra's product range and its manufacture. 
One fundamental difference is that all the products are produced in 10 sizes and contrast size labels don't reflect standard industry terminology. So no one needs to feel the stigma or shame that can come from the conventional XXS to XXL system. Another point of difference between Contra and most sports clothing brands is that the designs for the range are unisex. That is, the men's and the women's ranges have the same colors and patterns as each other. There are no stereotypical colors for genders, which also removes a barrier for those who do not identify as a male or female. Really important to Paul and one of his founding principles was that Contra should be produced to the highest possible ethical standards. All the fabrics used in the range come from sustainable sources and the manufacturing is carried out in trusted factories in Portugal and Lithuania, where the highest ethical standards are maintained. These facilities ensure good working conditions and fair wages. An unrelenting focus on these principles and an insistence on the highest standards should mean that Contra clothing retails at a very high price point. But Contra isn't driven by profit, it's driven by fairness. While other brands focus on high margins and delivering shareholder return, Contra, wholly owned by the UK-based charity Parkrun Global, can accept a lower profit margin to provide exceptional value for money for the customer. One interesting aspect of Contra that Paul quickly came to understand is that while at the launch of the business, he had to rely on his instinct and personal judgment. As Contra grew, the focus needed to be completely on those buying the products. When it came to making decisions about what would be in the range and how it would look, initially I was making the calls. But as Contra grew, I've understood how important it is to involve other people in the decision making. Now that Contra is established, Paul can afford to be excited about what the future holds. Although, according to Paul, it is still early days. I'm impatient to grow the brand. And there's so much to look forward to. Of course, there are also risks. Covid was difficult for everyone, Contra included. But there is definitely a sense of optimism now that more people than ever are thinking about being active. Contra took a further step forward with the launch of its essential capsule collection range. Hard-wearing exercise staples that are built to last and designed to fit anyone who wants to improve their fitness. As for Paul, he believes the brand is on track to achieve greatness. It fills me with immense pride to see someone wearing a Contra item out in public. I just want to give them a hug. Every Parkrun event generates a lot of data, which is carefully curated to improve your Parkrun experience. Let's dig down into some of those numbers. Each week, as barcodes are scanned at every single Saturday or Sunday event around the world, there's so much to see on the results pages. First-timers with their green leaf, volunteer credits, junior wristband achievers, milestones, age-graded performance and new personal bests. Meanwhile, more and more people are registering for Parkrun. Right now, there are almost 8 million people registered for Parkrun across the globe. That's a lot of information. It's a valuable resource and a force for good. You probably won't be surprised to hear that this data is tightly controlled by Parkrun and never sold. So, what does all this information mean to Parkrun? Probably most importantly, if something happens to you at Parkrun, we can use the information on your barcode to quickly find your emergency contacts. Back at HQ, looking at the numbers from each event provides us with statistics such as average ages, finishing times and number of volunteers. The data also means we can listen to what our community wants and needs, and we can get the right information to them at the right time. This helps Parkrun make decisions about how to operate events safely, gauge how participants feel, help us to spot trends, and ultimately make the world happier and healthier. Mike Graney is Parkrun's global head of analysis. It's safe to say he's a fan of numbers. But how does he use all of this information to move Parkrun forward and to be responsive to the needs of walkers, joggers, runners and volunteers? I see the job in two parts, he says. Half the time is spent in the database. 
Every time someone signs up, every time they walk, jog or run, and every time they volunteer, we know the details of that, and I use that to understand who's participating and who isn't participating. This gives Mike a solid, factual basis to analyse how often certain demographics take part or the average finishing time. The other half of the job is spent developing insights around those trends, he explains. Park runners are carefully selected and invited to take part in surveys on all sorts of issues, from volunteering to how far participants travel to get to an event, which could be a barrier to participation. Every month, around 10,000 park runners respond to surveys. We're not only incredibly grateful for the willingness of so many participants to get involved, but it also means that the level of response is statistically robust, allowing us to extrapolate these findings into accurate metrics that can be used to create a countrywide and worldwide picture of health and well-being. Surveys and insight work also involves people from different parts of the parkrun organisation, such as the health and well-being team and the volunteer management side. The language used in surveys is critical. We put a lot of thought into the questions we ask, says Mike, trying to make sure we don't use bias or lead people down certain paths. Questions are also always phrased so they don't sound overly critical. We're mindful of trying to build an understanding. For example, if someone has signed up but not yet felt able to participate, we want to understand what it is about Parkrun that means you are yet to take those first steps with us. How can we develop ourselves to make things easier for you? Parkrun's data can be especially valuable for academic study. The Parkrun Research Board is there to ensure it is properly and safely used. As Parkrun and its pool of participants and data grew, so did the number of inquiries from academics about undertaking research relating to Parkrun. The Parkrun Research Board was initially created in 2013 to manage this process, led by Professor Andy Shannon, Professor Mary Hickson and Dr Claire Stevenson. Professor Steve Hake, who set up the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre in Sheffield, became chair in 2016. The Parkrun Research Board provides research groups and individuals, where appropriate and with ethics approval, the opportunity to engage with the Parkrun data and the wider Parkrun community for health and wellbeing research purposes. The board has between 10 and 15 members from diverse, relevant backgrounds and includes researchers, Parkrun representatives, academics and practitioners. So, how does the Parkrun Research Board work in practical terms? A huge survey from 2018 helps to explain. In 2018, the Parkrun Research Board sent an online health and wellbeing survey to everyone registered with Parkrun in the UK, and 60,000 people responded. The questions were about happiness, physical activity, life satisfaction, mental well-being, motives for taking part in Parkrun and the perceived impact of Parkrun. The researchers wanted to take a closer look at people living in socio-economically deprived areas and also those who had registered for Parkrun but said that they were inactive because they have the most to gain from becoming more active. 89% of respondents said they had increased their physical activity since participating in Park Run, and 65% of those from the most deprived areas said they had seen increased benefits to health and well-being. This demonstrates how Park Run can play a vital public health role and attempt to address inequalities in participation in physical activity. The next challenge is to identify how community initiatives can engage more effectively with the least active people from the most socio-economically deprived areas. Parkrun statistics also help to give us an insight into how the COVID lockdowns impacted on UK communities. Professor Steve Hake of the Parkrun Research Board describes Parkrun as a community event that just happens to have a 5k walk, jog or run in the middle of it. The chair of the Park Run Research Board is right, and the importance of communities coming together was thrown into sharp focus during the COVID lockdowns. Two surveys, one in 2019 and one in September 2020, asked 450 park runners questions about health, well-being and physical activity levels. Willing participants came from a range of backgrounds and locations. As well as generating tables of statistics, the surveys also encouraged open text responses, which gave a fascinating insight into feelings surrounding lockdowns. Asked about missing socialisation in the parkrun community, 
A typical response was, I like the community and fun nature of Parkrun. Without it or something similar, life feels more isolated. Losing connections to others in the community had a particular impact on younger adults who had been involved with Saturday and Sunday events. Without parkrun, I've lost purpose to my running, was another sample response. I stopped running early in the lockdown because of outside time limits and I just haven't got going again. Parkrun would help provide a purpose. This answer and the one above were typical of around 20% of respondents. Are you one of those 10,000 parkrunners who respond to surveys every month? How fascinating to find out how the questions are formulated and how the answers can help not only to shape the future of Parkrun, but to make the world a happier, healthier place. And of course, the data held by Parkrun is securely looked after and never, ever sold. And if you want to find out more about Contra Clothing, Parkrun's own inclusive activewear range, check out www.contra-movement.com. Join us again for episode four, where we'll be talking about self-care and mental health. Thank you for listening to Parkrun Magazine. We hope you like the features and enjoyed our simple ways to take steps towards a happier and healthier life. To find out more about your local Parkrun event or collect a free copy of the printed magazine, head over to magazine.parkrun.com. Parkrun Magazine is created by Parkrun with the audio version made possible through editing and audio adaptation by Imogen Lees and production by Light the Wind Media and Runcom. If you enjoyed listening, please remember to subscribe, leave a review, or share it with others. That's all for this episode. We hope you enjoy the next one. 